Hi, my name is Vineet and today we're going to talk about counters using NIDAC Express. Counters are very flexible features on a multifunction data acquisition device. And if we look here, I have a USB DAC device that has four 32-bit counters. They can be used for connecting to encoders, for generating signals. And today we'll look at how DAC Express lets you use some of those for some simple event counting. If I look over to the computer here, I, have, I haven't plugged in my USB DAC device, but when I go ahead and plug it in, right away, since I have the driver software installed, it de detects the device and it says, what would you like to do? Well, let's begin an application with this device using DAC Express. So right away, it launches DAC Express. It looks at the different hardware that's already connected to my system here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to click on this multifunction I.O. device. And in this case, I have access to the pinouts. I can look at manuals and specifications. But let's go ahead and create a measurement panel. If I drop this down, I can see analog channels that you might have seen in previous videos. But today, we're going to look at counter input tasks. So if I click on that, it will immediately launch the measurement panel. And it will show me which devices I have connected and, and start acquiring. So in this case, I have counter 0. That's on my multifunction DAC device. And I can choose to do a, a different, different types of counter measurements. We'll go with event counter. An event counter basically counts different transitions from low to high or high to low. And I can, by default, see that it's already configured for counter 0 and PFI 8. I've already gone and wired up this push button to PFI 8. So we're, we're good there. And I can do a rising edge count instead of a falling edge count. That's configurable here. And I can set my initial value to 0. So at this point, I should be able to start to generate pulses and count those rising edges using this push button. I'm going to start pressing the button. Yep. And you can see, sure enough, it's starting to increment. Now, you might see multiple rising edges per push button. That's common with the mechanical switch. There might be some bouncing that happens. And there's, there's ways that we can filter that out. But if I zoom into the graph here, I can also say that I want to look at, look at the different edges. And I can start to increment them and actually see them as they're incrementing on a time scale. I have the absolute value here being shown on this tile. I can also see a little bit more data by switching over to the table view. So now I see the counter channel. I see the value. But then I also see exactly what I'm connected to, PFI 8 on my BNC 6363. And, uh, and I can set the, the initial values. Now let's say instead of counting up, I wanted to configure it to count down. Well, I can come over and say, now I want to do a down count. And maybe my initial value, I want to count down from 25. So now if I take a look at the graph, I've already had my, my value set to 25. And now when I start to create pulses, now you can see it counts down from 25. I can reset that as well using this reset control. And it goes back to 25. And all of these features are configurable to me either through software, through a user button or user configuration, or I can also use hardware lines in order to reset things and change directions. If I come over to this direction control, you can see it says user. But I can also say I'd like that direction to be externally controlled. So now I can pick a different hardware terminal in order to, in hardware, configure whether that counter is counting up and down. And that's useful if I want really fast transitions in order to catch every single time I want something to go up and down and use a, a hardware line instead of software in order to switch between the different modes. I can also do the same thing for a reset. If I want to do a, a hardware trigger in order to reset that back to a certain level and then start counting, well, I can synchronize things and really measure timing in a, in a very consistent way using those kinds of features. So that's a brief introduction to how counters work in DAC Express.